synonymizing text with part of speech information. In this video, we'll extend the exercise we did in class this week where we take some text, we tokenize it, and then we find synonyms using WordNet to replace each of the tokens in that text. We're going to extend this functionality by looking at the part of speech of each of the tokens to see if we can retrieve a better token than our original program did. Let's look first at synonymize.py, which is the exercise we did in class. In this script, you would pass in the raw text of English Latin 1 of the UDHR corpus to Maine, unless you provide your own input, which is what we'll be doing. So your input, stored at sysarg v1, goes to main as the argument text. We split text on new lines. We'll only have one if we're passing in a single line of text. And then, using NLTK word tokenize, we split the sentence into tokens. Initialize a variable called new text, which is an empty string. And for each of the tokens, we'll concatenate to new text the value returned by find synonym with token passed in as an argument, and then a space. And finally, we'll print that new text. So let's look at what's going on inside find synonym. Find synonym takes a token. And then it will find all of the WordNet sin sets of which that token is a part. And we've abbreviated WN for WordNet here using this statement above. For each sin set, we'll get the lemmas from that sin set. And for each lemma, we find the name and compare it to the original token. If the name of the lemma is different from the token, we return the name of the lemma. If we find no lemma names, or even if there are no sin sets for a token, we return the original token. Okay. Let's see what happens when we pass to be or not to be to this script. Okay, here's some of the strange behavior for finding synonyms within WordNet. To remain the same, not became non, that's okay. But for B we get beryllium, and for or we get organ. And the reason for this is WordNet accepts abbreviations as tokens. So OR, an abbreviation for organ, and BE, the abbreviation, the chemical symbol for beryllium. I don't remember what number on the periodic table beryllium is. But beryllium certainly doesn't make sense here. How could we improve this output? Well, one way we could do so would be at least to make sure that we are maintaining the same part of speech as was found in the original text. Parts of speech, of course, things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and so on. Beryllium is a noun. B is a verb. So if we want to maintain the same part of speech, beryllium certainly does not make sense compared to the original verb, B. Fortunately, NLTK provides us a way that we can obtain part of speech information for every word in our text. 
we'll open Python and import NLTK. And then we'll have a sentence called or containing the string to be or not to be. We'll split that sentence into tokens using word tokenize in ltk.word tokenize and let's print out tokens okay uh oh it was a misspelling that looks better let's continue now let's give tokens some part of speech information using NLTK part of speech tag or POS tag and we'll just pass in the list tokens so we're reassigning the output of part of speech tag tokens to tokens and now you can see that our list of tokens is now a list of tuples the first of which is the first of which is the token and the second item of which to of each tuple is the part of speech tag so that's the behavior of NLTK part of speech tag let's see how we can use that behavior to our advantage This script, synonymized by part of speech, is similar to the previous script, but we'll go over the differences. This part looks exactly the same, as does splitting the text into sentences. As does splitting the sentence into tokens, but now, we'll reassign tokens as the output of NLTK dot part of speech tag tokens. So now our list of tokens looks exactly like it did as we saw in the Python interpreter before. A list of tuples with tokens and tags. Which is why we can now say for token tag in tokens where token is the first item in that tuple and tag is the second item in that tuple. Now we are appending to new text find synonym but find synonym looks different. Find synonym now takes a token and a tag and then we print the new text as before. Now let's see what's different inside find synonym. In find synonym, this part should look very familiar. What we are doing before we reach that part of the code is establishing what our list of sin sets will be. So we start with sin sets as an empty list, simply so we have something initialized as the variable sin sets by the time we reach this part of the code down here. And then we can establish whether the noun or whether the uh, tag indicates that the token is a noun or a verb or an adverb or an adjective or something else. If tag starts with n, now there are several possibilities. There are several tags that NLTK part of speech tag could give to a noun such as NN for a common noun, NNS for a plural common noun, NNP for a proper noun, NNPS for a plural proper noun. But what all of these tags have in common is that they represent nouns and they start with the letter N. So by saying if tag starts with N, we know we're dealing with a noun.
Same thing for a verb. If the tag starts with a V, we have a verb. With an R, we have an adverb. With a J, we have an adjective. You can look at the NLTK Part of Speech Tag documentation to find out what tags it's possible your tokens will be tagged with. Now, whereas before we were simply saying sensets will be the sensets returned by that token, now we can specify the WordNet part of speech. Now the WordNet parts of speech look different from the NLTK part of speech tag parts of speech. NLTK part of speech tag returns tags that are similar to those in the pen tree bank, but WordNet simply has lowercase n for noun, lowercase v for verb, r for adverb, and then two for adjective, a and s, and I won't go into the difference of those, but just know that there are two ways an adjective could be annotated within a WordNet senset. And that's why we get all of the sensets from either A or S tags down here if we have an adjective. So once we have established what our sensets are, we can go through this part of the code. But now we have a guarantee that we have only obtained sensets that are specific to the part of speech specified by NLTK part of speech tag. Forgot to mention else here. If we have other, then we're not going to specify by part of speech tag. We're simply going to obtain all the sensets that contain that token. So, let's see if this script does any better. So instead of synonymize.py, we'll use synonymize by part of speech.py. Okay, that's pretty good. Well, it could be better, but at least it's better than our original output. Instead of beryllium, we now have exist, which is at least the same part of speech as B, it is a verb, and it also happens to be a very nice synonym here, to exist or not to exist. The twos remain the same again, we still have non for not. Oregon, well, it is still a noun, so it is technically an okay replacement given the script that we have written. But clearly, if we want to come up with a very nice synonymized text, we still have some work to do. But our purpose here was simply to try to incorporate some part of speech information, which we seem to have done successfully. So we'll have to worry about organ another time. Until then, good luck deciding whether or not to beryllium.